going to our new chapter, chapter two, metal and the atomic structure. Okay. Uh, in this chapter, you have about four subtopics are going to learn. So the first will be basic concept of metal, and the second is a uh, history. Okay, about the development of the atomic model. Third will be structure of model. Sorry, structure of atom. Okay, and uh, fourth will be isotope and its uses. Okay, so let's uh, start for the first subtopic, okay, basic concept of metal. So in this subtopic, you have to know how to describe the metal briefly and explain the changes in the stance of metal. Third will be determine the melting point and the freezing point of methylene through the activities. Okay, but here we will just uh, discuss the activity, okay, as we cannot done our we cannot do our experiment. Are we right? Okay. So I will explain the explanation for the uh, experiment in your textbook. Okay. Okay. So for the first, describe metal briefly. Okay. So what is the meanings of the metal? So this is the theory you have already learned in your home one. Okay. So metal is uh, something that has mass and occupied space. So for occupied space, you can also uh, consider it as has volume. Okay, so uh, you can look at the figure here. Okay, so this is the experiment which is actually want to prove that the gas uh, is actually have mass. So initially, the P and Q is filled with uh, air. After that, the balloon P. Okay, so the pin causes the air to reach. Okay, so and then you can see the balloon P now is absent of the gas. So the on the other hand, okay, so the balloon Q, uh, balloon Q, which is filled with the air, is uh, have a higher mass. Okay, so this experiment showing that the air has mass. Okay, so air is considered one of the metal. Okay, so for another experiment. Okay, so here. Okay, so for the bottom figure, okay, you can see when you inverted the cup okay, into the water, so the water is not filled up the space of the cup. So because uh, there is an air in the cup, and this is showing that the air occupies space. Okay, so this is what you have already learned. Okay, so the meanings for the metal will be something that has mass and occupies space. So metal consists of particles that are tiny and discrete. Okay, so this is also the figure showing that the metal, okay, such as gold and the gas, such as the oxygen, okay, is made up of the small uh, particles. Okay, and metal. Exist in three states, what we actually learned in our PD3, where it's solid, liquid, and gas. Okay, however, actually, uh, there is a fourth state of matter, okay, so which is also exists in the gaseous form. And what's the difference between the state I mentioned here is the name is known as the plasma. So the plasma and the gas form is exist in the gaseous form. However, the Plasma is considered uh, as a ionized gas. So that means the plasma is a gas which is uh, ionized. Okay. So uh, to achieve the state in plasma, it's normally need to have a very, very high temperature. Okay. So you can see here we have the example. Most star exist as plasma. Okay. So this is a fourth state. Okay. You you need to know okay, in the metal, besides of the three 
main step, okay, you have already learned in your ministry, which is the solid, liquid, gas. So now we have to know, actually, there is another step called as plasma, which is the ionized gas. Okay, so here we discuss the changes in state of metal. Okay, the change of state of metal is caused by heating and cooling. Okay, so when heating, the metal will be received heat. Okay, then it will be vibrate and absorb heat. And if the energy provider is able to give enough energy to overcome the force okay, between two particles, they will be changed to another state. Okay, so this is what we actually want to discuss in uh, this chapter. Okay, and the cooling will be the, the way where the particles is actually uh, release the heat. Okay, and then that means that the energy contents of the metal will be lost and then until it actually uh, not able to overcome the attraction between the particles. So that means it will be changed from, for example, gas to liquid or from liquid to the solid. Okay. Okay, so here we have the example. Ice cream melts because it absorbs heat energy and change from solid to liquid state. Okay, so this is a example you can see at this figure. Okay, so for another one would be the vapor in the air that comes into contact with the cold surface, losses heat and form water droplets. So you can see the surface. Okay, there is a lot of water droplets. Okay, because the air, uh, touch the cold surface and losses heat to surrounding. Okay, so this is a discussion regarding the metal. Okay, so the next will be the particles. So the particles is, uh, we, we have three types of particles here. So atom, molecule and ions. Okay, so what's the difference between these three types of the particles? So as we know that the atom is the smallest particles, of an element and cannot be divided into anything smaller. So this one also the syllabus you actually learn in PD3. Uh, if not, this second is uh, chapter chapter five. Okay. So here we have the uh, example. Okay. So this is a uh, arrangement of the solid. Okay. So this is uh, actually the metal. So metal exists in the one type of the atom only. Okay, you can look at the figure here. And uh, next will be molecule. So a molecule is a neutral particles consisting of two or more atoms. They are chemically bonded together. Okay, so you also can look at the figure here. Okay, so this is a uh, two hydrogen atom. Okay, and one oxygen atom. So initially, both of the type of the atom. Okay, there is a uh, separate okay and to become a water okay so they have the chemical bonding okay between the between the oxygen and the hydrogen okay they will share the electron balance uh, okay so become the molecule okay and the ions positively charged particles are formed by a metal atom negatively charged particles are formed by the non-metal Atom. Okay, so for this, you can look at the figure above. So the sodium comes from the group one in the table. Okay, so it's considered as a active metal. Okay, so it is tends to lose one electron and become positively charged. Okay, and chlorine. Okay, is at the group seven. Okay, group seven in the gray table. So it has the seven electron balance okay and the outer shell so it actually tends to receive okay one electron so when the chlorine receive one electron it becomes negatively trusted okay you can look at the figure here so after that both of them will be attracted okay will be attracted together by strong electrostatic force and form a ionic bond so the ionic bond normally is a, a strong strong bond okay between two types of the ions Okay, so here uh, is uh, three particles and their character, okay, and the definition. Okay, so next here we have the classification of the metal. 
So substances background of matter can be classified into element and compound. Okay, so what is the element? So here we have the definition. A substance that made from only one type of atom. Okay, so and here you can see that the element which uh, we have the only one type of atom can be atom and also molecule. Okay, so the atom here, the example given here is carbon. And the molecule here, you can see there is the two uh, atom of oxygen is joined together. So this is a molecule of oxygen. Okay, so we have another example, for example, nitrogen. Okay, nitrogen is also is a combination of the same type of atom. Okay, so on the other hand, you can look at the definition for the compound. So the compound is made up of two or more different type of elements which are bonded together. Okay, so here as per explanation just now, okay, so the water is made up of two atoms of uh, hydrogen and one atom of the oxygen. So that means that the water molecule is considered as compound as it has a two type of the atom. Okay, so and ions definitely will be also the compound because there is one uh, ion positive here will be the sodium, another will be the ion negative. Here is the example of chlorine. Okay, and become sodium chloride. Okay, so next will be the changes in state of metal. So metal exists in three different states, which are solid, liquid, and gases. Okay, so this is a in normal condition in uh, our earth condition right? okay so the plasma is uh, quite difficult to occur as naturally okay as it is needed a very high temperature okay which will be occur at the star okay so particles in different state of metal have different arrangement strange of attractive force between particles and kinetic energy of the particles so here we discuss the arrangement of the particles kinetic energy and the attraction force between the particles. Okay, so for the solid, you can look at the figure. So all the particles is arranged close together. Okay, while for the liquid, okay, so the particles will be uh, closely packed, but not in orderly manner. And the gas will be uh, far apart, okay, the particles. So uh, the kinetic energy of the solid will be very low. Okay, because the attraction force between the particle is strong. Okay, so if let's say the solid particle is providing enough energy, okay, it will be uh, able to overcome the attraction force be uh, between the particles and become liquid. Okay, but here we just comparison for the kinetic energy contents of the three of the different states. Okay, so the liquid will be have a higher kinetic energy compared to the solid state while the gas will be have a higher highest okay highest kinetic energy and the liquid uh the attraction force between the particles for liquid is strong but less than solid state and the attraction for gas will be weak okay so uh the particles is able to move freely and randomly in the gas state Okay, so here is the conversion between the state of the metal. So metal undergoes changes when heat energy is absorbed or released. So as mentioned, okay, so the when the energy uh, when the heat is absorbed okay, from solid, it will become liquid and then gas. On the other hand, when the gas releases the heat, it will become liquid and then solid. So look at the sentence number two. When heat energy is absorbed, the kinetic energy of particles increases and vice versa. Okay. Okay, so you can look at the dash line, red dash line, okay, which is uh indicate the heat energy. Actually, it's heat energy uh absorbed. Oh, here is actually uh reverse already. Okay, so the red color dash line actually indicate the heat energy absorbed huh? okay so for solid change to liquid it need heat okay to melt and the uh, liquid to gas will be boiling or evaporation so the main difference between the boiling and evaporation is the 
boiling point. Uh, boiling is occur at the boiling point only, but the evaporation is occur at any temperature which is lower than the boiling point. Okay, and the sublimation will be the conversion of the solid state straight away to gas. Okay, okay. So the blue color dash line okay indicate the heat energy release. Uh, okay, so we have the gas change to liquid. Uh, in the process of condensation, liquid to solid will be freezing process, and the uh, gas straight away become solid. So the process here mentioned is the deposition. Okay, but actually it also can also call as sublimation, uh -huh. Okay, so this is the third uh, melting point and freezing point in the subtitle of the two point one. Okay, so the first thing is the definition of the melting point. So melting point is the constant temperature when substance changes from solid state to become liquid at the fixed temperature. So that means when the uh, matter changing the state, okay, it is actually it has a constant temperature. Okay, so the freezing point also the same. So this is a constant temperature where the substance changes the liquid to solid, okay, at a specific temperature okay so no two substance have the same melting point and freezing point okay so we can actually uh, identify the substance by using their melting point and boiling point for example the melting point for the water is 100 degrees celsius and the alcohol will be 78 okay so we can use the boiling point or melting point to identify what is the substance okay okay so here we have the activity okay from textbook page number 26 okay so this is actually the experiment to determine the melting point and the freezing point of the naphthalene okay the naphthalene is a C10H8 okay this is a chemical structure for the naphthalene Okay, so for conducting this experiment, the material required will be naphthalene and water. The apparatus used for this experiment will be boiling tube, 250 cm cube beaker, thermometer, tripod stand. Okay, you can look at the figure. Okay, tripod stand, red pot stand, and cramp, Bunsen burner, stopwatch, conical flux, wire gauge, and spatula. Okay, so this is the uh, apparatus we needed for the experiment. So the procedure here will be the first, fill up one third of the boiling tube. So here you can see the boiling tube. There is only one third uh, of the boiling tube is filled with the naphthalene. And then we have to place the thermometer okay, in the boiling tube. Pour water into the beaker. So you can see the, the boiling tube is actually heating in water pump okay so this is called water pump okay so why we cannot straight away uh burn the boiling tube okay and must put into the water pump okay because the naphthalene is one of the flammable substance okay so it will be very dangerous and cause fire if you straight away burn the uh naphthalene to the Bunsen burner. Okay, so that's why we need to to have the heating in the water pump. Okay, so immerse the boiling tube into the beaker as shown in the figure two point four. Okay, like this. Ensure that the level of the naphthalene in the boiling tube is below the level water. So you can see the level water is here. So the naphthalene is below the level water. Okay, so heat water and stir the naphthalene. So you have to uh stir the Boiling tube with using the thermometer. Okay, when the tem temperature of the naphthalene reach sixty degrees Celsius, start the stopwatch. Okay, so that means that uh you have to heat until the temperature reach sixty degrees Celsius. Only you start your experiment. Okay, record the temperature and state the matter of the naphthalene. So that means at sixty degrees Celsius. Okay, you have to observe what is the state of the naphthalene. Is it solid? Is it liquid? 
or gas. Okay, so this is what uh, you want to observe. Okay, so uh, 30 second interval until the temperature reaches 90 degrees Celsius. So that means every 30 seconds, you need to read the reading of the thermometer. Okay, and then you have to observe the state of the nephilim. Okay, so you remove the boiling tube from the water pump, dry the outer surface of the boiling tube and put it into the conical flux shown in the figure 2.5. So it will be like this. Okay, so that means that you're actually conducting two uh, process here. So the first is a heating process. So we expected the temperature will be increased. And uh, another one, 2.5, uh, figure 2.5, okay, will be the cooling of the nephilim. So we have another graph to show the cooling effect for the nephilim. Okay, so again, stir the nephilim continuously, record the temperature and state of the metal of the nephilim at 30 second interval until the temperature decreases to the 60 degrees Celsius. Record your observation. Okay, so that means that initially we have to keep our nephilim uh, and we have to observe the state of the nephilim every 30 uh, seconds and recording the temperature. Okay, and another will be the cooling of the nephilim. You have to hold down okay, the nephilim okay, in the conical flux okay, as shown in the figure 2.5. Okay, and every 30 seconds you have to measure the temperature and observe the state also. Okay, until the temperature of the nephilim okay, drop until 60 degrees Celsius. So that means the recording temperature will be from 60 to 90. Okay, so after that you have to plot graph of the temperature against time for the heating of nephilim and the cooling of the nephilim. So you need to draw to graph okay based on the temperature you get okay so this is the first thing you have to do and the second on the graph label the state of the metal so because just now we have mentioned that every 30 seconds we not only measure the temperature we also observe the state okay is this solid liquid or gas you have to mention uh in your graph also okay so for here will be liquid or solid or both okay here mentioned in sentence number two Okay, and then determine the melting point and the freezing point of the nephilim from the graph plotted. Okay, so that means actually the melting point and the freezing point will be the same. And as per uh, explanation just now, okay, when the object change the state, it will have the constant uh, temperature. Okay, so let us see what happened to the graph. Okay, so after the experiment, you are expected to get the graph like this. Okay, so from the temperature, uh, from the curve of A to B, you can see the temperature increases and it is in the solid state. Okay, so when heated, the particles absorb heat energy and vibrate faster, become kinetic, and because kinetic energy increases. So that means that, okay, so we have to know what is the measurement of the temperature. Actually, the temperature is measuring the average kinetic energy of the particles. Okay, so you can see that for the uh, point A, okay, which is started with the 60 degrees Celsius, when we're providing more heat okay, to the nephilim, the temperature will be increased and increased. Uh, this is because the kinetic energy of the particles decrease. So that means here you have to know that the temperature increase is due to the kinetic energy of the particle increases. Okay, and then you can see uh, at the curve at the B to C, actually it's a straight line here. Okay, you can see there is actually no any temperature changes here. So if there is no temperature changes, that means that the kinetic energy contents, okay, will be the same from B to C. So what happened to the heat actually uh, when we we provided the heat to the nephilim. Okay, so as per mentioned just now, the solid particles at the line from A to B, so will be will be uh, compact and close together. So because there are uh, they have a low 
energy contents and not able to overcome the attraction force. Okay. Uh, but at B, B and C, the energy gain is actually used to overcome the force between the attraction of the particles. So that's why the temperature is still maintaining because of the kinetic energy at B, C is actually uh, remain the same. Okay, so the heat provided here is actually used to overcome the force attraction between the particles. Okay, okay, and at C and D, C to B here, so you can see the temperature increase. So as I mentioned just now, when the temperature increases, that means that the kinetic energy of the particles increases. So now, uh, as the attraction is already overcome, so the energy provided heat energy provider is actually absorbed by the particles and can able to move faster okay okay so and this is a cooling curve for the napoleon so we started our reading from 90 degrees celsius okay so uh the napoleon will be in liquid form okay from e to f so when in cooling process okay so the heat energy will be released to surrounding so that the kinetic energy contents of the water particles, sorry, not water particles, of the naphthalene, naphthalene liquid particles will be uh, decreased, okay? And at the point F to G, the temperature is already constant. So that means that the, okay, so this is the explanation for E to F, okay? So temperature decreases as this in liquid state. Okay, when colder, the particles release heat and move slower due to loss of the kinetic energy. Okay, and then at the F to G, the freezing is occur. No decrease in temperature from F to G because heat energy that is lost to surrounding is balanced by the heat energy release when the particle attraction each other to form solid. Okay, so that means the energy here is uh balance to the attraction of the particles okay so it, it will remaining the same uh temperature so that means the the bonding between the particle is actually formed at this state okay and then at the temperature when it decreases from g to h okay this will be uh, in solid state so when colder the particles release heat and vibrate slower so uh, slower Okay, so this is a uh, two uh, heating and cooling curve of the naphthalene you need to know. Okay, so at here, uh, what is the freezing point and the boiling point? So that is actually about 80 degrees Celsius. Okay, okay so this is a discussion uh, about the experiment, okay, in your textbook, okay. This is the, okay, so this is a discussion for the question just now. Okay, so you can see uh, why the Netflix is not uh, heating directly okay? because Netflix is the flammable substance and why we're using the water path okay? because the water path helps to distribute heat evenly this ensure even heating Okay, and then the number two during the cooling of the Netflix why is the boiling tube put into a conical flux okay and then b why is the napkin stirring uh, stir continuously and c predict what would happen if napkin is not stir continuously okay so you can look at the figure so firstly the question asking you why the test tube has to put into the conical flux second why we need to stir the napkin and what happened if we not stirring the naphthalene okay so a we put the boiling tube into the conical flux is to ensure that the cooling effect is evenly to hold boiling tube and the stirring of the naphthalene is to distribute heat evenly okay and then what will happen if we not stirring the naphthalene so here the answer here will be super cooling will happen so why is the super cooling okay so here you can look at the graph we supposed to get the straight line here however if we not stir our napkin okay so there will be a 
drop of the point here. Okay, so here mentioned that the super cooling is the cooling of the liquid to below its freezing point. So as our discussion just now, the naphthalene uh, freezing point will be 80 degrees Celsius. So that means that if we not stir the naphthalene, the temperature of the liquid will be lower than the freezing point. Okay, and at freezing point, suppose the naphthalene already changed to the solid, but it is still in the liquid state. Okay, so this condition we know as the super cooling. Okay, why super cooling can be occur? So here mentioned that super cooling is possible because of the lack of solid particles around which crystal can form. Okay, so that means that the stirring effect is actually to uh actually want to avoid the crystal crystal form in the area of the nephilina okay okay so the third question explain why the temperature become constant when melting and freezing of nephilina take place okay so as per mentioned just now they have the same uh temperature for melting and freezing point and the temperature is constant at the state okay due to the energy gain or loss is due to the form and uh, overcome the bonding between the particles okay so here during melting heat energy is absorbed by the naphthalene particles used to overcome the attraction force between the particles so that the solid can change to liquid and in the cooling condition heat energy is released which is balanced by the heat energy uh, release when particle attract to each other so that means actually this sentence want to bring out actually the uh, particles start to attract together and form a new bonding okay okay so now we go to the test yourself uh, 2.1 it is also in your textbook okay so there are three questions in this exercise okay we discuss one by one so state the type of the particles that exist in the copper wire so copper wire will be metal so all will be same type of the particles so here will be atom okay and then question number two lily does a hair with a three dry her hair with a hair dryer so then the process during the hair drying so during the hair drying the water okay on our hair will be changed to gas below the boiling point right okay so it will be evaporation okay so state the changes in the movement of water particles when hair is dry so water molecule move more freely and faster okay okay the third question uh lauric acid is heated from room temperature 50 degrees celsius so at 43 degrees Celsius, lauric acid start to melt. So that means the 50 degrees Celsius is already able to make the lauric acid to melt because it's already greater than the melting point of the lauric acid. Okay, so draw the heating curve. Okay, so for the heating curve, that means that the temperature increase. So our graph will be almost like this. Okay, and then you have to step the melting point here will be 43. Okay, and then the question asks again why the temperature will be constant at 43 degrees Celsius. Okay, at this condition, the uh the heat gain is used to overcome the attraction between the particles. Okay, so this is a uh, this is a graph heating curve you you have to draw. Okay, where temperature against the time. And that is a constant temperature at 43 degrees Celsius. Okay, and then the heat energy absorbed by the lauric acid particles used to overcome attraction force between the particles. Okay, until the solid completely changed to liquid. Okay, so we have finished our first uh, subtopic. Okay, and then now we have to continue to our second subtopic, the development of the atomic model okay so this is actually the history so i will go through 
uh, very fast. Okay, for this uh, topic. Okay, so in this uh, sub topic, okay, so you have to know the state of the sub atomic particles in atom of various elements, compare, contrast the relative mass, okay, relative charge of proton, electron, and neutron, and then sequence of the atomic structure model based on the atomic model of Dalton, uh, Thomson, Rutherford, Paul, and uh, Chadwick. Okay, so we, we see what is the uh, history of development, development of the atomic structure model. Okay, so the first sub atomic particles, it will be here the electron symbol will be E. So the relative charge will be negative one, and the relative mass will be one over thousand eight hundred forty. Okay, so here the relative mass is not the actual mass for the electron. It's just the comparison between the mass of the electron to another mass of the substance. Okay, so here the proton is actually the positive charge at the nucleus of the atom, and the relative charge will be positive one. The relative mass will be one. Okay, and the Neutron symbol will be N, relative charge will be zero, okay, which is represented as a neutral condition, and the relative mass will be one. So that means the electron is actually uh, far lighter, okay, compared to proton and neutron. Okay. Okay, so here is the development of the atomic structure model. Okay, so the first the John Dalton, okay, is the first uh, person discover or build the concept of the atomic of the atom okay so back of uh matter is back out of the particles called atom according to john dalton okay the atom is the smallest uh, spherical body that cannot be created destroyed or divided further okay and same element have the same atom so this is the dalton atomic model so this is the foundation for the development of the atomic model and here we have the concern okay according to him uh, he is the person who discovered the negatively charged particles and known as electron okay so he is the first person to discover electron and positively charged uh, atom is positively charged spheres with several electron Indeed, so that means that uh, under the Thomson uh, model of the atomic structure, so there is a sphere where the electron is together, okay, in the atom, okay, so will be look like this, okay. So the positively charged spheres, and inside we have the electron, okay, and then the next will be Ernest Rutherford. Okay, nucleus is in the center of atom. Discover the positively charged core proton in the nucleus. Okay, so that means he is the person who actually is the first person to uh, give the concept of the proton is at the nucleus. Okay, almost the whole of the atomic mass is concentrated in the nucleus. Electron moves outside the nucleus okay so will be look like this okay so the nucleus is consists of proton only oh. so that means that the neutron is still uh, not yet to discover okay so here is a new ball this one in an atom move uh, in shell around the nucleus so he is mentioned that the electron is actually not in the atom, is actually in they have their own orbit, okay, or core shell here. Okay, so this is a model of the bone. So the nucleus contents of the proton. And the electron is moved in their own uh, shell. So the next will be James Chadwick, okay. So discover mutual particles that are neutron in the nucleus. 
So that means check V is the first person discover the neutron, okay, in the center of the atom. So neutron contribute almost the same uh, mass of the atom. So that means half of the mass will be come from the neutron and another half will be come from the proton. Okay, so this is the model of the Chadwick. Okay, so it's what we actually study now. Okay, so now we go to our next practice. Test your sound 2.2. Okay. Okay, so the first question, so name the X. So what is X? So X will be electron. Okay. And stack the subatomic particles all in the nucleus of the nit uh, nitrogen atom. So the subatomic and the nucleus will be proton and neutron. Right? Okay. So compare the X subatomic particle mentioned B from the aspect of the relative charge and relative mass. Okay. So for the X will be negative and the relative mass will be very small, right? 1 over 1840. Okay, and then the proton will be neutral and the relative mass will be 1. And the proton will be positive charged and the relative, uh, relative mass will be 1 also. Okay, so this is the uh, answer for A. X is proton and B is proton and neutron. So this is the uh, relative charge and mass between these three types of the sub atomic okay particles so the electron will be negative negative one so the relative mass here put zero because uh they consider that half of the mass come from the proton and half of the mass of the atom come from the neutron okay as per mentioned the relative mass for the electron is uh too small compared to the relative mass of the proton and so here the answer give will be given key is actually zero. Right? Okay. If you put one over hundred eight thousand eight hundred forty, I think this answer will be also acceptable. Okay, so the question number two, electron move around the nucleus in shells. Nucleus of the an atom consists of proton and neutron. Okay, so the statement above show the information on an atomic structure of water. So the Nucleus consists of the neutron is discovered by Chadwick. Okay, so here James Chadwick draw the model, uh, atomic model, stated by the Chadwick. So this will be like this. So at the center of the nucleus must consist of the proton and neutron, and surrounded by the electron. Okay, so the answer will be almost like this. Okay, so uh. We continue our next uh, subtitle, Atomic Structure. Okay, so in this subtitle, there is four main ideas okay, you, need to, you need to know. The first will be define proton number and neutron number. Second, determine the neutron number, proton number, and numbers of electron in an atom. Write the standard representation of an atom, construct atomic structure, and electron arrangement. Okay, so this is a thing you have to uh, take note in this sub topic. Okay, so proton numbers and neutron numbers. So here you can look at the atom of oxygen. The oxygen consists of the eight. Uh, Eight proton, okay, and eight neutron. So the proton number will be same as the numbers of proton, okay. And the neutron number is sixteen here. It comes from the addition of the proton number and neutron number. So it's eight plus eight becomes sixteen. The sodium consists of eleven proton, and the numbers of neutron is uh, twelve. So the proton number will be follow the numbers of proton, which is 11 here. And the neutron number will be addition of the numbers of proton, which is 11. And neutron number here is 12. So you get 23. 
So here we have another example, chlorine. Okay, so we have the numbers of proton, which is 17. So the proton number would be same as the numbers of proton, which is 17. And the neutron number will be additional of the proton numbers and the numbers of neutrons. So we'll get 35. Okay, so the numbers of proton in the nucleus is known as proton number. Okay, and uh, another one, numbers of proton, total numbers of proton and neutron at the nucleus we know as neutron number. Okay, so these two statements you have to understand here. Okay, so here we have the formula. Okay, so neutron number can be numbers of proton plus numbers of neutron. So that means it's these two. Or you can just straight away use the proton number plus numbers of neutron. Okay, so here we have the example. Okay, can make you more understand regarding the calculation for the proton number and neutron number. Okay, so an atom is a neutral when the numbers of electron is the same with the numbers of protons. So that means that if the question given you that the atom is neutral, so that means the numbers of electron, which is the negative charge, will be same as the numbers of proton, which is the positive charge. So example here we have the oxygen, okay, which has the eight proton and also eight electron. So the example here and aluminium atom is 13, is with 13 proton and 14 uh, neutron. So what is the proton number? So the proton number will be 13. And the neutron number will be 13 plus 14, we get 27. Okay, so here the solution. Proton number equal to numbers of proton, which is 13. Neutron number is additional of the proton numbers and neutron number. So we get 13 plus 14, we get 27. So I think it's quite easy, right? Okay, so the second, the neutron number of the potassium is, is the 36. So the potassium has the proton numbers of 19. So how many neutron and electron uh, are there in the potassium atom? Okay, so we need to find the neutron. So we need to use 39 minus 19. So we get 20. So the 20 will be the neutron numbers of neutron and the electron will be have the same numbers with the proton which is 19 okay so here numbers of electron equal to numbers of proton which is 19 okay and the neutron number will be sorry neutron numbers of neutron will be neutron number minus proton number so we get 20 okay Okay, so here uh, is the additional uh, information. Okay, how the ions form by transfer the electron between the atoms. Okay, actually just now I have already indirectly explained how the ions of the sodium form. Okay, so the sodium is actually come from the group one in your periodic table. Okay, which you have actually learned in chapter six. For one syllabus, okay. So it is more easier for the sodium to lose electron and become positive charged. While the chlorine is at the group of seven or seventeen, okay. There, there is a seven electron balance, okay. So to achieve the stable condition, the outer shell must be have eight electron balance, okay. So to fulfill this condition the chlorine will receive one electron okay and make it as the stable stable ions okay so it will appear as the negative charged ions okay so when the numbers of electron increases and anions is formed which is negatively charged ion so that means that the negative negatively charged ion we also can know as Anion. Okay. However, when the numbers of electrons decreases, just like the case of the sodium, lost one electron, it will become cation. 
So the cation is actually known as positive trusted ion. Okay, so this is another name for the negative trusted and positive trusted. Okay. Okay, so here you can see numbers of proton for the sodium is 11 and the ions will be also the same and the neutron is also the same the main difference here is actually the electron from 11 to 10 because loss of one electron okay so for the query the proton number and the neutron number is also remain the same the changes here is only the numbers of electron okay so the chlorine gain one electron and become 18. Okay, so standard representation of an atom. Okay, so this is the uh, symbol for an element, and A represents the neutron number. So that means there is the greater number showing at the upper part, and the Z represented as a proton number which has a lower value compared to A. So here we have the example carbon. Okay, so here the carbon. Symbol is known as C and 12 represent as the neutron number 12 and the proton number for proton, sorry for the carbon will be 6. Okay, so here symbol of carbon element is C, neutron number is 12, okay, and the proton number will be 6. Okay, so here we have the example, a sodium contains 12 neutron and 11 proton so what is the standard representation of the sodium okay so the sodium symbol will be na and the neutron number is additional of the numbers of neutron and proton so that means 23 where 12 plus 11 and here we will given the proton number which is 11 okay so the answer will be like this okay so here there is an atomic structure and the electron arrangement. So these two is uh, there is uh, a bit different. Okay, so make sure you're not uh, confused between atomic structure and electron arrangement. So in this figure, you can see the nucleus not stacked, the numbers of proton and the electron, uh, neutron. So that means the structure here is a electron arrangement. So the electron arrangement, the first shell will be maximum uh, occupied for two electrons and the second shell will be eight electrons and the third shell will be eight so this is a stable and the maximum numbers of electrons can be fit in to each shell okay so here uh, we have the example proton numbers of aluminium is 13 so that means for the atom of the aluminium the electron will be also 13 uh, okay Okay, as mentioned for the second sentence here, the electron arrangement of the aluminium will be 2, 8, 3 because 13 is equivalent to the first shell which maximum will be 2 and the second will be 8 and remaining will be only 3. So that means the outer shell will only contain 3 electrons. Okay, so here already mentioned the numbers of balance electrons for aluminium will be 3. Okay, so here we have two uh, different figures. So the figure 2.13 representing the electron arrangement. So where the nucleus no mention about the numbers of proton and neutron. Okay. So the electron arrangement show the nucleus and electron arrangement. So nucleus means we no need to mention the numbers of proton and electron at the center. Okay. So for example here, the aluminium. We just give the symbol for aluminium at the center and then we arrange the numbers of the electron according to our our rule okay eight, two eight three as per discussion uh just now okay so for the atomic structure the difference here is we just need to change the symbol of aluminium instead of the proton number which is 30 okay and the neutron uh, neutron numbers of neutron which is 14 here okay so that means that the question need to give you the neutron number okay and the 
proton number lah, okay? Which is actually standard at the standard standard uh, this standard representation here, okay? Okay, so let us do the test yourself two point three together, okay? So here you can look at the question number one. Okay, table 2.3 shows the numbers of proton and numbers of neutron for element X, Y, and Z. Okay, so what is the neutron number for Y? So Y is here. So neutron number is additional of the proton and neutron. So we will get 11 plus 12. We get 23. Okay, so write the standard representation of the Z. So the element here, oh, okay, Z will be here. So symbol, we just put Z and the numbers at the upper part will be the additional of the proton number together with the neutron number. So 19 plus 20, we get 39. And the lower part represent as the numbers of proton, which is 19. Okay, so this is the answer. And number three, atom Y donate one electron. So that means the one will be a hey, one will be become positive ion Y. Stack the numbers of the proton, neutron, and electron of the ions. Okay, so why we have the numbers of proton remain the same. Then neutron we also remain the same. Now so, the changes here is uh, electron. Lost one electron that means will be ten minus one. We will get nine okay so we'll get the numbers of proton hey, sorry the bench here is 11 huh? okay i already look at the above okay so it's 11 okay it's 11 huh? and the numbers of neutron is 12 okay and then the numbers of electron will be proton number 11 minus one we get 10. okay Okay, so the next, uh, write the electron arrangement. So that means the electron arrangement, we just need to give the symbol in the center and not need to give the numbers of proton and electron. So for atom X, so uh, we have the proton where total is 10. So according to our electron arrangement, the first shell will be only able to fit in two electrons next will be eight so the arrangement will be like this okay so to eight and draw the electron arrangement so that means the center will be x the first shell will be fit with maximum two electron and the outer shell will be eight electron and then draw the atomic structure so that means we just change the x to numbers of proton and electron where is the 10 proton and 10 neutron separate in the question. Okay. Okay, so we still have another 10 minutes. Okay, so uh we try to finish our last our last uh subtopic for chapter two, where is the isotope and is users. Okay, so in this subtitle you have to deduce the meanings of isotope, calculate the relative atomic mass of isotope and justify the usage of the isotope in various fields okay okay so the meanings of isotope what is the isotope so isotope are the atom of the same element with the same uh, numbers of proton but different numbers of neutron so that means they are actually the same element example here we have three uh hydrogen okay that is the uh, same proton number the main difference here is they have different neutron number. So that means that they have different numbers of neutron. Lah. Okay. Okay, so here is an example for the isotope of chlorine. Okay, so chlorine 35. Okay, so both chlorine 35 and 37 have the same numbers of the proton. Okay, so the proton number will be 17. The neutron number given by probably 35 is 35. So we minus 17. So that means we get the neutron number is 18. And uh, probably 37 
Okay, we minus 37 with 17, we get 20. Okay, so this is a main difference between the isotope of chlorine 35 and 37. The numbers of electron is also follow the numbers of proton. Okay. Okay, so the second is the relative atomic mass of the isotope. So most elements exist naturally as a mixture of two or more isotopes. So that means why we have the calculation? Because the for example, the hydrogen naturally is not only one type of the uh, isotope, there is actually three types. Okay, so we have to actually get the average uh, mass between these three types of the isotope of hydrogen, uh, actually the meanings for this sentence. Okay, so relative atomic mass of this element depends on the natural abundance isotope in sample. So natural abundance is the percentage of isotope present in the natural sample of elements. So that means this is the natural sample which is mostly have the same of the percentage of each isotope in the in the naturally uh, environment. Okay. So the relative atomic mass can be calculated from the natural abundance of an element containing isotope using the following formula. So that means the question have to give you what is the percentage of the each isotope uh, naturally. So we have a example here. Okay, so no worry. So chlorine consists of two isotopes, okay, which is the isotope 35 and isotope 37. So the natural abundance, the chlorine 35 consists of uh, 75%. So the mostly in the natural environment. The chlorine is exists in 35 uh, isotope, okay, and the 37 will be remaining 25 percent. So calculate the relative atomic mass of chlorine. So for the formula, we have to uh, multiply percentage of isotope, which is 75, and its mass 37, and uh, another one will be 25 percent together with its mass which is 37 okay and then we divide by 100 so that means the relative mass for the chlorine is actually 35.5 okay so this is the average actually the average mass okay for chlorine in our natural abundance okay so uh here is actually quite straightforward uh, information you just need to memorize okay so the application or the uses of the isotope okay so here we have the cobalt 60 the application case is uh, in the radiotherapy to kill cancer without surgery so that means actually they're using the gamma ray okay the gamma ray have the very high penetration power can uh, penetrate through your skin okay and able to kill the cell okay sterilizing surgical tool so that means we want to uh, kill the microorganism okay, at the, surgi the surgical tool. So the iodine-131 treatment of the thyroid disorder such as uh, hyperthyroidism uh, and the thyroid cancer. So this is a treatment used by the uh, doctor and using the isotope iodine-131. In the agriculture, we have the phosphorus-32 to study the plant metabolism nuclear we have the uranium 235 which is the actually the main fuse for the uh nuclear power generator okay and then here is the uh, ecology we have the carbon 14 estimate the art artifact or four cells age and then lead to 110 in determining the age of the sand and the earth layer up to 80 years and then in industry, the hydrogen tree as a as a detector to study the sewage and the liquid waste. Okay, and then in engineering, we have the sodium twenty four to detect detecting leakage in the underground pipe. Okay, so this one you can study at physics. Okay, for the detail. Okay, so here is the figure to showing that the carbon sorry the cobalt sixty uh, can use in the radiotherapy to kill the cancer without surgery and here is a sample picture for the sterilizing surgical tool okay under the gamma ray okay where come from the cobalt 16. 
Okay, and then the medic medicine, okay, is uh, using the iodine one to one. Okay, so it's the treatment of the thyroid disorder, such as the hyper thyroidism and thyroid cancer. So this is the treatment uh, you can just observe at the figure. And the agriculture, the gauge counter, gauge counter is actually a measurement, it's a measurement instrument, okay, to detect the radioactive ray, okay. It's used to detect the movement of the radioactive uh, phosphorus 32. So this is a gauge counter. Okay, phosphorus 32. Okay, it actually used to measure the measure the radioactive ray. Okay, presents in the plant. Okay, so this information helps scientists understand the detailed mechani uh, mechanism of how plant utilize phosphorus to grow and reproduce. Okay, so you can see here we have injects the phosphorus 32 to the plant. So that means the radioactive ray will be move uh, to hold of the plant so we can see the plant actually able to absorb the phosphorus well or not okay okay so this is a nuclear uh, power generator this is also one of the uh, knowledge you will be discussed with you at your physics actually okay from five speakers okay so uh, we are using the uranium 235 okay to generate the electricity okay so how the uranium generate the electricity you can get the knowledge from physics huh? okay okay then for the archaeology uh, is used carbon 14 to estimate the artificial or fossil age so the figure here is actually the study of the half-life for the carbon 14 so the half-life for the carbon 14 is about 5700 Yes, so that means if the contents of the carbon 14 reduce 50, so that means the age for the fossil will be about 5,700 years already. If I say the remaining carbon 14 is about 25%, so that means will be another 5,700 years. Okay, so we just need to know the contents of the carbon 14 in the for sale uh, in the for sale okay okay so this will be also the same using the lead 210 to determine the age of the sand and the earth layer up to 80 years okay and the industry uh we're using hydrogen 3 as a detector to study sewage and liquid waste in engineering okay so we're using the uh sodium 24 the sodium 24 will be emitting the beta ray okay so the beta ray will be penetrate through the uh through the pipe okay and we can detect the leakage okay where the under pipe uh we can actually no need to take out all the the soil right okay we just need to know where have the highest reading okay by using the gm tube okay so we have actually finished our all sub topic in our chapter two okay so uh that's all for my explanation today okay okay so thank you for like thank you sir okay, bye.